Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the fifth webinar in our 2017 SAP Success Factors HR Live Demo Series. Today's session is on Workforce Analytics. My name is Jesse Labenwolf, and I'm going to cover some brief housekeeping. We'll be addressing your questions at the end of the demonstration, but you're encouraged to submit questions as you think of them using the Q&A panel on the left side of your console. If you experience any technical issues, please let me know via that same Q&A panel, and I'll help you out shortly. Today's session is being recorded, and we'll be sending out a link to the replay of this webinar in the next week or so. Keep an eye out for it in your email. Finally, I'd like to highlight the resort list, which should be on the right side of your console. This has a few assets for you to download, as well as a link for you to register for the full webinar series. You can also access this list by pressing on the green icon at the bottom of your console. And with that, we're ready to dive in. Today's webinar will be led by Tai Nguyen and Kuros Bazad. Tai is a Senior Solutions Consultant, and Kuros is a Director of Solution Management here at SAP SuccessFactors. Tai, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jesse, and thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, we've got an exciting hour planned uh, for you coming up on SuccessFactors Workforce Analytics. So I'm joined by my colleague Kuros Bizad from our uh, solution management team. I'll be doing a lot more talking here momentarily, but I'll hand it over to Kuros for introductions, and he's just going to take you through a quick overview of the solution before we jump into the live demo. Thank you, Ty. Thank you, Jesse, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Kuros Bezza, part of the solution management team work for, uh, responsible for workforce planning and analytics. Um, today I'm going to just you know, have a few slides to share with you to set the context uh, for the demo that you're going to be seeing, so I'm not going to spend too much time in, in uh, slides. I think when we talk about HR reporting and analytics, traditionally there's been a challenge in terms of kind of getting the data out of the systems, curating it, putting it into a format that's usable by customers, and, uh, which is across, whether it's a business, whether it's the executive, um, uh, or the shop floor managers, whatnot. But in the data, we send it over the wall, and we have no idea what happens with it in most cases. Now, there is, you know, in a lot of organizations, this is starting to change. HR is taking a, a bigger seat and actually doing uh, more work in terms of not just producing the data, but actually helping the customers interpret the data and, and, and how to use that data, how to, what to do based on that data. So really, the, the role is changing from a service provider angle and going more towards a business partner. Um, and the key point here is, you know, I think to kind of be able to influence uh, the decisions and the, the actions is to kind of come up with a point of view based on the insights and the information that you have in the HR systems, in your talent systems, uh, tied back understanding of what the business is about. This is what helps to kind of drive, you know, that end game and actually have, you know, that business impact. So it's not just Somebody asked me for this piece of information, it took me two weeks to generate this report or this dashboard, but really understanding why is that, why are we asking for that information, what is it being used for, and coming up, you know, providing that value on top of just the data. Of what this means, here's the data, here's what it means, here's some intervention suggestions that I have in terms of what you can do about it. And that really helps to drive and uh, ultimately the decisions and the actions that are come part of that. When we look at you know the overall I think HR reporting and analytics landscape, you know, success factors provides, you know, and SAP provide a you know, kind of suite of solutions. You know, there is not uh, one size fits all. You know, there is a range of consumers from you know the shop floor manager to HR professionals to the line of business owners, the managers, the executive to the board, and each has a little bit different perspective in terms of what they need and how they would like to consume it. So with our solutions, we've got you know, almost three buckets that we can put in. What is, well, the first one is really what's embedded within the SAP Success Factors HCM suite in terms of our insights panel embedded within the processes, within the transactions, the tiles and dashboards that are on the home page, on the mobile, within the applications, and overall reporting, the ad hoc reporting, the standard and compliance reporting. Um, that you can do out of the system, whether it's you know in terms of just a list report, or it's in form of charts and dashboards, whatnot that you can uh, send out. The next level up uh, is really more of the add-on analytics applications, and this is what, where we bring data from across HR and talent solutions, and not just you know be uh, looking at tables and 
a field level information, but try to you know bring the insights out of all of this stuff that's out. And so really curating that information, providing you know, the, the intelligence based on that to the business. Um, with that, you know, there's another level of that. This is the enterprise analytics uh, and for us, you know, from SAP Business Objects Cloud and Digital Boardroom. And this is really where capabilities to blend the HR and talent data with other business data, with your finance data, with your expense data, with your procurement data, with, you know, from your con uh, contingent workforce data, uh, again, from operations data. So this is where you can do all the blending and do more of an advanced analytics and ultimately create the stories and push it onto the digital boardroom which is uh, a purview for you know the executive and the board in an organization. And we'll touch on all of these things through the solutions. The last level is really the planning solutions, SAP Success Factors Workforce Planning, which you know traditionally is a strategic workforce planning application focused on you know two years and beyond, create critical roles in your organization that drive your business strategies but introducing also a headcount planning solution which is focused on essentially all of your workforce, you know, next, you know, next planning for your headcount for next six months, 12 months, 18 months, driving your recruitment plans, uh, your training plans, your succession plans, whatnot. And then ultimately the SAP business planning uh, Business Planning Consolidation, let's say Business Objects Cloud for Planning, which allows you to do the integrated business planning, the more enterprise level planning uh, for your solutions. The focus of our presentation and demo today is SAP Success Factors Workforce Planning, and um, I'll be diving into that. So when we talk about SAP Workforce Planning, Workforce Analytics, you know, they some of the key capabilities, what we do is we take data from your, say, source HR systems, source talent systems, whether it be success factors, employee central, succession, performance, compensation, or SAP on-premise HR, or any third-party HRIS system that you might have. We take that data from you in terms of raw data, and we turn that around. We make sure that data quality is you know, up to par, and we deliver metrics out of the box to you. So that the whole process of taking that data, transforming that data, uh, curating it is done on the success factors side and ultimately we provide you metrics out of the box based on this information. And you can essentially slice and dice these metrics according to a just wide, wide variety of dimensions and look at it within the different hierarchies like a supervisor hierarchy or a location hierarchy or organization departmental hierarchy, whatever that you've defined within the organization. So your ability to look at, you know, headcount, turnover, diversity, mobility, you know, transfers, promotions, all of the, the core HR type of stuff, learning metrics, performance metrics, all of those, and actually having one place to slice and dice and analyze across these areas without having to go, always go back to source transactions and tables and fields and trying to build these things from scratch. Again, the goal of this is to really accelerate the process, give you these metrics out of the box, so when it comes time to you, you do an, anal an analysis, you don't have to reinvent the wheel for all these metrics. You know, we're providing this dictionary of metrics, but the idea is not to start from page one and move forward, but to figure out, here's my business drivers, here's my HR drivers, and here's the you know, three, five metrics that actually help to assess what's going on within that. Now, this is kind of on the back end of it, then we provide some advanced analytics to, tools to interactively, visually do your analysis and investigate is the tool for that, and ultimately how to communicate this information via headlines, dashboards, reports, whatnot, so again, a wide variety of tools to push this out and information to the consumers. If you drop, uh, drop it into some of the things that I talked about, again, when you talk about generating the data, right, we take the data out of your source systems. If it's SAP employee central, talent solutions, as success factors, we'll take the ownership of kind of doing all the extracts and in, in transformations and loads into workforce analytics. So we do all the back end work. You don't have to do uh, muck around with the data. That really saves a lot of time. We do the data stewardship. If the data is coming from an on-premise solution, or other systems, this is where you as a customer can take the data out, give it to a, you know, where you put it on a, a kind of a secure server, we'll take that data and then massage it and load it up and generate these uh, definitions and metrics for you. 
as part of that, one of the things that happens is you get these standardized metrics across the organization. You can take any one of them, make it your own, create your own custom versions of these. But you know, by the definition, you, you, you're all using, again, a standard definition of metrics, which is a really hard job to do within an organize, large organizations. Next is, you know, when we talk about curating, we talk about these standard metrics and definitions, right? We don't, you know, again, take any, like, just a turnover for high performers. We don't just give you the definitions and how it's calculated. We give you guides on how to interpret this information, right? So as you're upskilling your HR professionals, as you're upskilling your HR analysts in HR world, you can understand, again, what does this mean? What does this number mean? What's a good number versus what's a bad number? How to use this information? What are the related metrics that gives you, that you need to look at to get a big picture of what's going on, right? So it's not just a dashboard or a picture of one metric, but it gives you a full picture on how to analyze. Um, as you see on the right side, you know, we've got these kind of what we call metrics packs, group, functional groupings of metrics scored in different areas. So you can source these from all the different systems that you might have, or it could be all SAP or all success factors or a good mixture of both and other systems that are out there. But bringing all that information into one place, having these standard definitions, metrics on the left side, and being able to kind of analyze across, across and really get a good understanding. So again, a big, big accelerator for your organization to be able to answer questions quickly. So once you have these metrics, now out of box, you can make these metrics visible in a number of different places. What we've got is the insights panel. So within the, your recruitment process, within your performance process, within your compensation planning process, whatnot, you can essentially provide access to these metrics on the, on the fly. So a, person, a user, a manager, a HR professional doesn't have to go somewhere else to get access to this information. So this is one place. Or you can have them on the home page, again, for managers, for professional, HR professionals, leaders, whatnot. So they have ready access to this information. Or on a kind of purpose-built dashboards that have all that information shown to them. Within all of these, you can actually drill in. You can drill in if the security has been set up to allow the user to drill in. They can drill in and see what's behind the numbers. That's the power of really validating the information that's consistent, that's true, uh, that makes sense. So seeing who is behind it, what's behind it, what makes these numbers, and ultimately actually take, you know, all the way to taking action based on these all the way from a very high-level aggregate number that's shown on the home page or the dashboard. We, you know, I mentioned uh, Investigate. This is a very interactive visual tool that allows you to kind of do more of a search-based, Google-based uh, lookup for these metrics and di different dimensions, pull them in to your canvas, pull multiple metrics, and analyze across these different things. You can do, you know, level of forecasting. You know, okay, here's what the, the, the trend has been in the past few years. How, where is it going? Right? So you can pull all that, visually do that, and actually build these into kind of libraries. Of, of the collateral and share that information. Super powerful, you know, you can see the visuals, you can see the tables underneath it, one, the other, a great uh, selection of filtering and formatting that's available within this. Choose, it shows you some of the different chart options that might make more sense for this particular visual or graph or information that you're looking at. Again, very, very interactive, very powerful. On the right side is what we've got, what we call headlines. Right, and headlines is not just pushing a chart or a dashboard to a manager. So this is, you know, I think tends for more people who are, I think, less uh, I think sophisticated in terms of interpreting the information. Um, and this kind of provides the means to push the, the chart and dashboard, but also kind of give the interpretation, tell them in common language what exactly is happening with, uh, within their organization, what's relevant to them. And with you know, one or two, one click, you can get, see what are the biggest areas of concern that are contributing to these numbers. Right? So they can, it's, it's very much making it easy to push this information. You know, it, this is a purpose-built analytics application. And in the, in the sense of all the other applications, the you know, succession performance compensation, all of these metrics, all of these definitions, everything is translated into the language uh, of, the, of the user. 
So a person looking at a metric in, you know, a tournament metric in France, read everything shows up. The definitions, the descriptions, the interpretation guides shows up in French, where somebody in, in Germany sees it in German. And so you bring that consistently in terms of language and interpretation of these metrics across a global organization. And you don't have to build separate dashboards for each one. So ultimately, you know, it, it's, you know, having this insight really helps you kind of, you know, do the decide and act. Again, there is a project level type of uh, analysis and analytics that you do, and you know, the information that you actually, sh you know, share with the managers to influence behavior. You know, I think these are some examples. Another example that uh, you know was in, in the past from one of the customers was around, you know, vacation accruals. I think the project-based aspect of it was that they did analysis on was that they determined that their vacation liability accrual was building up year over year. And you're, you know, accruing at $15 an hour, you're getting paid out, you're paying it out $25 an hour. Um, you're in, and people were actually hoarding vacation. Once they started diving into it, then they identified that there's only segments of the population that are actually the biggest contributors towards that. And actually those, that segment are, are actually have, you know, the largest amount of sick time allocated to them as well. So with that, you know, they identified that this is a big liability. It's growing on annually, but not everybody needs to, you know, be influenced to take more vacation. You know, it's only certain groups. So as part of that, they push metrics by dashboards to the managers of those groups that they had identified to encourage them, to motivate them, the managers, to motivate their uh, employees to take more vacation. So the project side of the house was done, you know, with a tool similar to investigate, you know, with the, the prior, the predecessor to that the query workspace. And then the analysis was done based on the, the, the charts and dashboards to push it on to the managers. So there's a lot of ways that you can do the different examples on how you can actually decide and act based on some of the information. Now, we talked about the digital boardroom and SAP business objects. All of these, uh, with the next uh, wave of the business objects cloud release in April, we're also providing a connector. So all of these metrics and the dimensions were not there, going to be available to business objects cloud to build into stories and push onto the digital boardroom, which is an example in the bottom. On the, on the images, right? And this really allows you, when you're from an enterprise BI perspective, instead of kind of going back to tables and field perspective and rebuilding and spending time on data preparation, all of that, taking this curated information and readily pushing it onto, store, onto, the, uh, onto the boardroom for uh, access by, by the board, by the executive, so they can have this HR information, the talent information in the context of the all running, overall running of the business. So it makes it very, very powerful from a very, you know, I guess they find in the shop floor all the way to the boardroom having that access to information. So with that, I will pass back on to uh, Ty to go through the workforce analytics demo for everybody. Thank you so much, Kuros. Uh, excellent overview. I hope that set the stage for everybody out there as we jump into um, the live product demonstration. Um, so like Kuro said, SuccessFactors Workforce Analytics is a purpose-built application. It's designed to simplify the process of acquiring, integrating, and delivering big data-driven insights. And it solves you know, the most important and common challenges that we see by transforming and visualizing raw data um, into uh, meaningful metrics. Uh, it can integrate data from multiple systems, and it helps to ensure what we like to call that single version of the truth. Workforce Analytics provides thousands of metrics, benchmarks, dashboards, and reports, so you don't have to start from scratch. And it delivers insights to all users, right, from data scientists all the way to the casual manager. So it's not just about big data, it's about better data for HR. So today, I'm going to walk us through a storyline where an HR business partner is alerted of a critical issue and gathers the necessary information to prepare her operations manager. And I think this is a common situation many of us can relate to. So let's see how SuccessFactors Workforce Analytics helps support this challenge. So I've gone ahead and logged into my SuccessFactors system here as an HR business partner. And what you should be seeing is my home screen, 
which I use as my daily productivity page. And right away, it's displaying for us a key metric in my analytic headline. What I really like about this is that Workforce Analytics is alerting me to my key issues right away and allows me to be more proactive in my role rather than reactive, um, helping with that decide and act mentality. It also saves me valuable time in addressing an issue before it becomes more serious, writing the ship, so to speak. So what I notice here is that my positions with ready candidates rate is below target. So I can access the same headline actually on my phone or tablet as well, allowing me to really get a jump start on this analysis, regardless of where I am. There are various thresholds, and if the amount moves above or below these thresholds, the colors change based on what is configured. So that color coding, coding from a scorecard and dashboarding perspective um, is huge for an average end user consuming this data. Since it's still in a manageable range here, what I want to do is address this issue right away. And this is important because what the system is doing is that it's continually mining HR and talent data across the organization. Headlines proactively finds pain points and uh, hotspots that are relevant to each manager. So we can present custom alerts to individual managers in a common language, highlight specific areas of concern. So let's dig a little bit deeper. I'm going to go ahead and click on that headline. And when I drill down, I can see further detail, my key areas of concern with the lowest ready candidate rate. What we see is the China location here um, has a fairly low candidates uh, available, as well as the store operations job function. Those are both listed. And what's concerning about this to me is that I know my sales manager is about to take a new position in China as an operations manager. So what I want to do is investigate this even further before I update Jeff, my manager, on this successor situation. So is this an entire issue for the overall organization? You know, what areas are doing well? When I zoom out, um, I can see that um, this is indeed a, a more of an isolated incident. Um, there are other key locations and job functions that are doing well. So it's important for me to kind of calibrate the information here. Why is this important? Well, the, the contrasting data points in this headlines report shows me where to focus, but also where to gain insights from areas that are doing well. So I'm going to calibrate this information with my workforce plan, which highlights our, our talent pipeline. This is our overall workforce analytics dashboard. As you can see, lots of great content here. There's a number of different ways I can access this. Uh, one of the preferred methods by a lot of our customers and our end users is simply having this available on that home screen. So we'll get back to that uh, workforce analytics dashboard in a second here. Down below, I've listed my favorite reports that I access on a regular occasion. There's my workforce plan. And what I'm going to do is look at the findings that we were just alerted in in our headlines and, and analyze it further using our workforce plan report. Now, I know we have a strategic expansion plan for China. It's a, really our next big growth area. What I want to do is look at this headcount information. What do we see? And, and right away from the first chart at the top there, it appears that we have a lot of new hires. Um, but we also have a lot of people leaving the organization. So there's a bit of give and take there. Using this data, I can also see that there's an increasing demand for critical roles over the next three years. Uh, that's growing quite rapidly uh, in terms of our overall headcount plan. But the data suggests here in this workforce plan report that we have a workforce gap. We need more talent ready to fill those critical roles in our new strategic market. So we need to accommodate a growing workforce. Does our recruiting need to get better? Um, you know, are we losing good workers? Do we know who the good workers are and how to train and develop them? So let's go back to that dashboard view that I just showed you here. And this dashboard is an excellent summary of all my key 
HR metrics. Um, like Crows alluded to earlier, this is actually made up from over 2,000 metrics provided by uh, SAP SuccessFactors. SuccessFactors workforce analytics can also integrate data uh, with external data to provide a cohesive enterprise view of this information. So operating expense, perhaps integrating finance data, contingent labor analytics being sourced from SAP Field Glass, uh, even recruiting data can all be displayed here. All these data points assembled into one visual dashboard puts information at the fingertips of decision makers. Now what I can see near the top left of this view is that our learning activities are down. And if we take a closer look at that chart, it's actually um, especially true in China. Uh, all regions, though, are down. So we're going to analyze that a little bit further. Um, China is also experiencing negative high performer growth rate over the same three-year period. And there's a large amount of employees leaving with less than one to two years experience, um, as indicated by the termination rate chart on the upper right-hand corner. So let's determine the root cause of this issue by drilling down, again, a little bit further into these findings. Let's take a closer look at this high performer growth rate. This report tells us if we're developing our top talent into high performers. There's already quite a bit of detailed information here. But what I really love about this is how easy it is for me to slice and dice this information. Um, that's all available for us on the left-hand side. So for example, if I wanted to focus just on China today, I'm just going to select from the list of parameters there and filter that out by location. I like how the entire report refreshes according to that. So we get some corresponding information. I'm going to take it a little bit further. Instead of looking at nine box ratings here, I want to analyze this by age and get an understanding of the demographic around that. And since China is a new market with a lot of young hires, I want to make sure that age uh, is or is not an issue. So looking at this, there's a few things that jump out at me right away. Our talent um, young talent age group is not growing fast enough. That's kind of the group around the 20 to 29 uh, age group. Uh, millennials are a huge part of this group, so we want to make sure that we work on perhaps a young talent program. Um, also, the 40 to 49 group are likely to be experienced enough to take on key positions, but as you can see, um, they're not growing either. So let's look at another metric, our termination rate, to see if you know, uh, voluntary termination um, uh, is related to that. Uh, voluntary termination uh, is just one of over thousands of metrics pre-built into the system and based on success factors um, over 30 years experience in the industry. Just going to take a look up top here. Those are all displayed for us in the drop-down menu in the upper left-hand corner there. And simply selecting on that will have us run our termination uh, rate report. This metric is important because as voluntary turnover represents loss of organizational knowledge of history, um, culture, process, right? Um, depending on the caliber of the replacement, this turnover may also carry a lot of net loss of skills and knowledge among the workforce. Um, and that might explain why we might not have enough successors. The metric shows that 60 um, the 60 age group are one of the biggest groups leaving the company, which is a little bit unusual for employees who are getting ready to retire. Unless, of course, retirement is included in the voluntary termination metric. So what I want to do is just double check how this is calculated to see if, if indeed retirement is a factor for that age group. The report's definition that you see here describes the parameters of the report, how the information is being presented and calculated. And indeed, if we take a closer look at the purpose of this, um, retirement is called out. So it's, it's important to recognize that because this suggests that the 20 to 29 group and the 40 to 49 group are the ones that are leaving the company the most. So it makes sense now why we might have a, a shortage of top talent. 
So let's drill down into the 40 to 49 group here. I'm just going to click on that and take us down to the next level of detail. This ability to drill down from a high-level dashboard down to the detail allows us to remain in our train of thought on our, our analysis. What we see is a variety of fields, which are all customizable. Um, but probably the most alarming thing jumping out at me is the reason itself for people leaving, job dissatisfaction. It's a very common reason. So if that's the case, perhaps tenure plays into this. With this data, we see that employees with one to two years are leaving much more um, than any other group. And to turn that on in the report itself, I simply scroll down and organization tenure is a pre-created uh, dimension for us. <clears throat> and given the overall average that we're looking for, um, indeed at 25%, it far exceeds uh, you know, the suggested guidelines that we set forth for the organization. Now we know that voluntary termination <laughs> isn't always a bad thing, right? Companies need new talent, new ideas, new perspectives, um, but there's a certain range that's going to be healthy. So what I want to do is check our benchmark data here to find the desired range. Um, that's easily accessible simply as another page in this report. Success factors benchmarks are derived from an existing data set using workforce analytics. And what we've done is we've pulled together metrics from different industries and verticals for our clients to reference. So this gives me the ability to do a comparison across all customers. Now at 8.1 being the desired overall range, I can see in the table below that the uh, one to two year and the five to 10 year groups are, are actually way over um, that desired range. So people leaving before two years can mean a bad fit. It, it seems related to that young talent issue we saw earlier. So in the next part here, I'm going to do further investigation. The investigate tool that Kuros was speaking about earlier is a great example of analytic innovation. Um, what I really love about it is that this is a tool that gives me a lot of flexibility and power, yet in a very easy to use interface. So anybody can start this type of investigation, this type of analysis. Um, what I want to be looking at first is uh, historical termination rate. Um, I want to build an analysis, a visual analysis here, that's going to plot this information over time. Um, but also allow me to see perhaps a, a future view as well. All my metrics are available on the right-hand side, and simply selecting termination rate there will begin to build this report for me. And by default, it gives us all uh, time periods. We can see back to 2014, but also projected out uh, into the future as well. Now, I want to see if termination rate differs if we incorporate performance ratings. So I can add additional dimensions to this, perhaps common performance rating. And what I really want to correlate is if performance rating related to termination rate means we're losing high performers. And it confirms my suspicion. If we take a closer look at this chart, we're losing our highest performers with greater frequency than any other members on the team. And the data suggests that if we don't do anything about it, the trend will continue. The Analyze tab on the far right lets me take this information even further. So it allows me to visualize it how I want it. I could take it out another three years if I want to. I can turn the trend line off and even change my visual options of how this information is being displayed for me. Once I'm done, I can add this analysis to my collection. And this is, allows uh, easy access for my team and I. And again, anybody can do this type of investigation. The interface has been designed with end users in mind. It's visual, it's interactive, and very straightforward. All right, so the next thing I want to do is compile my findings and share it with, my, with Jeff, my, my new operations manager. So let's go back and take a look at some of the reports 
um, available to me. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at our pay uh, for performance report. Um, what I'm really hoping to glean from this is whether or not we have a, a pay for performance issue. As like all the other examples so far, very visual and interactive. And it gives me the ability to slice and dice this report as well, um, the information within it. So what we see, especially in the table details below, is um, we, it shows that many of our top talent with high performance ratings, meets expectations, um, are actually being paid below their range. Right? So it's, it does indicate that we do have a bit of a pay for performance issue. If people are leaving, their performance is uh, good, if not great, are not necessarily being compensated adequately. Now, it's quite easy for me to build and edit a report like this. Um, I can show you an example of one uh, I've built recently. And it's just all using our report designer. If I go into my individual user workspace, which um, is showcasing the security around this, of course, you want the right information in the hands of the right people. I'm just going to go down to a simple example um, that I started last night. The interface itself, as you can see, is quite user friendly. It allows me to edit the data, um, but also edit the, the formatting as well to achieve the look I want. So I can change the look and feel, and decide exactly how it's laid out, um, but also go into the query and decide from the library of analytics what I, do, uh, what I indeed want to see in the, the report itself. This is also all drag and drop, so it's very dynamic and very straightforward for users to begin assembling the core HR analytic information they need on a regular basis. Um, this is also great because I can do it myself, right, without necessarily relying on IT or another department. And with a little bit of time, I can create something very, very insightful. Let me take you to our talent management report. Um, I think this is just an overall amazing collection of data uh, providing a lot of insight. As with the previous reports and dashboards we saw, I can change the filters just as easily as I did before and have all the components refresh accordingly. So we have uh, a variety of categories displayed in this single report. Um, what I want to do is actually report on a different supervisor. I'm going to go into Mohan's team. I'm going to take a closer look at um, Audrey's uh, department. What we see here is, through this collection of information, is Jing Feng on Audrey's team has the highest number of underperforming employees. And this will allow me to drill down into those employees here to see uh, what's going on. I get the corresponding summary of the trend, but also the detail behind the scenes. What I can also see is the employee themselves and even access their core HR record. This is provided by SAP SuccessFactors Employee Central. And this is a huge productivity gain because I can take action from right within a report in the moment. My train of thought is preserved as I move from analysis to action and therefore completing the process that um, I need to do. While I have access to comprehensive reporting, dashboards, and visual analysis, I may also want to have more of a focused HR approach. I can view a collection of tiles as shown in this dashboard here. But I can also choose to have individual tiles displayed as well. This interface here, from a succession point of view, is personalized to me and my team, which SuccessFactors secures for me through permissions. 
in our succession dashboards, I can view them one by one and drill down to further detail if I need to, which is, as you can tell so far, a recurring theme with our workforce analytics solution. What I immediately see, though, is that with these dashboards, it supports my findings so far. I don't have enough candidates in the pool, and most of them are still one to two years away from being ready, if not more. All our users love this curated content to support their analysis. And with all the other powerful tools available, Workforce Analytics satisfies the needs of all types of users, so from casual consumers all the way to your advanced information analysts. I've conducted a lot of investigation. I've used custom reports, pre-built metrics, and dashboards to arrive at my findings. What I want to do is make sure I don't lose any of this work. I also want to be able to quickly refer to them as I'm sharing my findings with the team. The report center is a really convenient way for me to store my reports and dashboards in one central location. I can see all my reports and all the dashboards, all the content that has been shared with me so far as well. This is really a consolidation of all the content I need to support my business with on a regular basis. As this list of content grows over time, it's going to be really handy for me to be able to sort this content as well. Um, and I can also filter this content. And probably um, equally as important is the ability to share this content out with others in the organization. And if I need to, um, export this information to conduct further analysis. And that's all available on the upper right-hand side to sort and filter, um, and also to share this information. All organizations make important short and long-term decisions. Right, to ensure the success in today's competitive economy. And HR is a critical part of this decision-making process. From what we've seen today, making human capital information available to managers and executives enables immediate insights benefiting all employees across all levels. So I was notified of a lack of qualified individuals ready to take over critical job roles. I use this information with a workforce forecast interactive analytic metrics, benchmark analysis, and consolidated dashboards. And I shared my findings with Jeff, my operations manager, who is now aware of the succession issues and better prepared for his new role. And both Jeff and I have access to the same data, so we can create our own report content by ourselves. Now, this is only one of many scenarios that Workforce Analytics can support combining data from your financial systems, CRM, HR, operations talent. Workforce Analytics aligns your human capital management activities with business strategies to target employee challenges facing every organization. That concludes today's uh, live demonstration of this solution. Jesse, let's see what's going on with the Q&A out there. Excellent, all right. First, I want to offer everyone the opportunity to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one demo. Real quick here, if you want to um, have us contact you within the next 48 hours, we can schedule a meeting and you can get a little more information on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, so I'm going to leave that up in the background while we jump into Q&A. Um, I'll leave that up for a couple of minutes. You'll have another opportunity at the end of the webinar to, to reach out to us too via a survey. Um, but I'll tell you about that in a moment. Let's jump in to some of our Q&A here. So Kouros, why don't I, I kick this off to you. To use the analytics, do you have to use all of the success factors suite of products? Um, to answer that uh, question, it's pretty flexible. So you can have all of success factors or you can have none of the success factors suite except for workforce analytics. So for example, we have customers that have been running workforce analytics on top of PeopleSoft for nearly 10 years. Uh, we can run on top of Workday. We have customers in that. We can run on top of Oracle eBusiness Suite or any HR. We bring data from any talent solution. So you, if you obviously have success factors, employee central, talent modules, you know, ability to, you know, to bring the data from those solutions, you know, we manage, success factors manages all of that for you. But if you have any other solution for your HRIS talent, you can get the data out of it, even if it's in a spreadsheet, we can get it into the system and then you can use it. Fantastic. 
All right. Uh, kicking it back to an earlier question, are those metric groups that you call metric packs, is that list of metric topics included in the cost of analytics, or do you have to purchase them separately? Um, so with Workforce Analytics, uh, when you license it, you get access to all the metrics packs. So again, everything is included in the same license. Um, but I think that the caveat to that is that you know, because this data for the different metrics pack comes from different sources, they will require a little bit of a different implementation to bring that data and transfer and get it into the system to available. So you might, you know, as part of your implementation project, you know, essentially stagger that and decide, oh, I want my learning data first, or I want my recruiting data, or I want my performance data in there. So depending on what your business priority is. But everything is included in the license, but it requires a little bit of different implementation according to the source. And uh, another important thing is, you know, I think a lot of custom, uh, companies, customers do acquisitions. So you might have perhaps multiple SAP on-premise solutions that are running, perhaps a mix of S, you know, SAP and PeopleSoft and success factors, you know, because you want to keep your acquisition on their own systems. The workforce analytics, you can bring the data from across all of these different systems, and this can become the one system, one source of record across all of those. So, you know, as simple as, you know, there's no such thing as simple headcount, but to get access to your headcount across all of these acquisitions, whatnot, it makes it really easy to see those numbers. It makes it very powerful. Excellent. Um, what is the recommended frequency to update the analytics module with SAP production data? So we typically do it again for you know for workforce analytics. This is we're looking at the you know, time trended HR analytics metrics. Uh, we do it on a monthly basis. Um, you can bring in you know I think uh, there is an option to, for uh, to bring in more than once a month. Uh, but you know, it's, I think unless you're talking retail where you are seasonal and within weeks you see changes in the numbers, uh, there is not such great variation. So again, depending on your business driver, you might decide. You no, know, again, you might want to get more more frequent refreshes than that. Um, again, I want to kind of make a distinction between. Uh, I think this is a good question, but make a distinction between reporting operational and strategic analytics. Right now. Again, from an operational perspective, you do need access to real time. You know, here's you know three people left yesterday. We've asked you know 20 people in the past week, right? That's a little bit different. You know, it's tactical as opposed to strategic. Where what's happening with our turnover across the organization? Where is it happening? You know, is it getting worse? Is it getting better? Where is it going? So that's uh, the distinction. But for now, workforce analytics uh, can refresh on a monthly basis. Now, and from a roadmap perspective. Uh, with Employee Central as a source, we are going down to a much more frequent, you know, access, you know, almost nearly day, kind of almost a daily refresh of that information, the trends. So it, it, it's going to expedite with the source that's success factors. Great. Does does Workforce Analytics require a separate license to enable? Yes, Workforce Analytics requires its own license. All right. And can you see what or who's behind the numbers? Do you provide an option to take action? Yes. Yeah, so it again, the ability to see the details, and, uh, and Ty showed that in the example. So when you're looking at the metrics pages, and I think the examples that Ty showed, those the metrics pages first of all come with a solution. So you don't, you're not required to go and build every single one of those for all these metrics. Again, all the metrics that are in the box, they, those are the standard pages and the filters or whatnot, that's all available. When you look at the numbers that are showing up in the tables on the charts, you can click on those, and that brings you the drill to detail if the security authorization has been given. So, you know, kind of going, uh, you know, from the, the percentages, from the accounts, to the actual, you know, who makes up those numbers depends on security, but you get to see those. And once you're in the drill to detail page, then you have the option to, there's a little icon there that you can kind of brings up the quick card for that individual that gives you the information about the person that's, uh, that's shown up on the list. And then you have a list of actions that's available to you uh, for you to take that. So you can very rapidly go from, I don't know, but the turnover for my organization is 7%, to this particular per, uh, organ, uh, part of the organization that's 30%, and then who are the people that make the 30%, and then to kind of take a, you know, some kind of action on that. All right. 
Are there special requirements or set up in order to use workforce analytics in conjunction with the learning management system and reporting data, data from that module? So again, I will make a distinction between reporting off of learning data. So this is you know, a list of everybody who attended this course, how many times this course has been offered, what are the scores, to effectiveness of learning you know, and you know, the impact on the business, which would be on workforce analytics. So um, if you think about, you know, I think Kirkpatrick, uh, level, you know, one to three can be addressed out of the LMS system. Level four, where you bring in and the effectiveness of that against the business stuff, you can address that out of workforce analytics solutions. So the type of questions that you would answer is a little bit different, you know, with, uh, but you know, again, it's, there is a learning uh, metrics pack that brings against, uses the LMS data or from any third party learning management solution, we can bring it in and give you those access to those learning metrics as part of the overall metrics. And what is the main difference between SAP Success Factors Workforce Analytics and SAP Business Objects? So SAP Business Objects is our suite of you know, business intelligence tools. Um, and you know, so again, if you kind of think about it. It's one is you know one is a purpose-built analytics application with HR content, a curated HR content as part of it. BI, our business object suite, it's a set of tools. Again, I think Excel is a tool. Excel comes empty. You can put in HR data, you can put in finance, you can put in whatever data, right? BI, our BI tool can sit on top of your finance, your operations, whatever data do you want to bring in yourself. Workforce Analytics has that content already. It comes with the content. It sources the data from your systems, but it, it curates that and gives you that access to those metrics. Right, we have business objects now. You've got multiple, again, a wide variety of tools with a BI on-premise, our business objects cloud. Within that, there is you know, enterprise planning capabilities, enterprise analytics capabilities, uh, predictive analytics capabilities, uh, just a wide variety of very, very super powerful uh, tools. Again, those are more enterprise BI tools. HR is a line of business that's a consumer of those tools. And we, from a business objects cloud perspective, we integrate with workforce analytics. So the metrics that are here, instead of rebuilding all those in that tool, you can essentially read from that open success factors workforce analytics as a source and read those metrics and push them onto your boardroom. Great. And can you include custom fields in the analytics? So in workforce analytics, you can include custom fields, uh, but you know that will require you to kind of work with our backend. Again, it's uh, when you think about it, workforce analytics, you as a customer do not have access to the data model on the back end to may bring your own data to the end, do what you want to do. It's that's more what you would do with business objects cloud or our business objects tool uh, analytics tool sets, right? So with success factors workforce analytics, if you want to bring your own data, you will work with our, you know, the information services on the back end and they will help you and facilitate and accelerate the process to bring that data and kind of set it up on a regular basis to have that available within the system. Can you repeat where you get your benchmarking statistics? So for benchmarking, this is, uh, we base the benchmarks data based on all our workforce analytics data. So again, every customer has, let's take example of a turnover for high performer metric, right? That uh, definition is standard and all of our customers that are using workforce analytics, we take that data and we create, and we anonymize it and we create benchmarks. We have to have, you know, we've kind of defined that, you know, eight is a number is, we have to have minimum eight numbers that contribute to a benchmark and a kind of a slice and dice component of that, right? So turnover for, by gender, if you have eight customers that have data for that, that we make that, if, because we can now anonymize that, we can make that available uh, as a benchmark, so you get to see. Now, if we have eight in a particular industry, you can see the benchmarks for that industry. If you have eight that are in a particular uh, region or eight that are in a particular revenue kind of size or number of employees, so these are different ways that you can slice and dice the benchmarks, but it kind of goes back to the number eight. But you have to have eight customers that are fit within that that you get access to that benchmark. Um, we've been doing benchmarks for workforce analytics, I would say, since mid-90s. It used to be generated and published as a book. 
um, now that's, you know, again, it's today it's available within the system. So any of these metrics that you're looking at on the drop-down, there's a benchmark view that it actually pulls in and shows you the benchmarks for that same metric so you can really kind of compare to your peers within the same framework. You don't have to uh, access another system or another report or another dashboard somewhere else. Everything was within the context, and you can build that into your products. So it's all based on the data that's already in the cloud. Excellent. Well, we've got three minutes left, so I'm going to call the lightning round. We're going to try and get through as many of these questions here in the next three minutes as possible. So first up, what is the typical implementation time for workforce analytics? Um, we would say, you know, I think to bring, stand up the workforce analytics, uh, you know, from a third, uh, third party source is about uh, 100 days. Um, and at that all, I think there is a very defined project line. We've done, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these over, you know, the past, I think, you know, 10, 15 years. So, and, you know, a lot of that depends on how fast you can get the data out of your systems. How, what's the quality of your data? So we work with you, work back and forth, and, you know, again, there is a block to that that describes what that timeline looks like. Now, that's, you know, again, 100 days. When we go to kind of the next generation of workforce analytics in, in the next little while, you know, for employee, for success factor sources, that timeline is going to get reduced dramatically. So you can be up and running in as, you know, as little as two or three weeks for some of the stuff. So it's going to become much more powerful from a time, uh, a time to life. But you know, I think I would say in 100 weeks, you know, for the, or for the foundational, and then, you know, probably, uh, you know, four to six weeks to eight weeks for additional metrics packs to stand it up and bring the data and massage it and ensure quality and everything else. And another benchmark data question, uh, what kind of d data is included as part of the workforce analytics subscription? Uh, all the benchmarks are included in the subscription, so you don't pay extra to get access to the benchmarks for WFA. So when you subscribe to WFA, you get access to benchmarks. Excellent. And is workforce analytics available on a mobile device? You can, yes, so the, the metrics and, and uh, you can essentially, that the tiles is, are enabled in the mobile device and, as well as the headlines, those you can see on the, on the iPad, and all the tiles are available on your, you know, again, whether it's a handset a phone or, or an iPad or a tablet, you can see those. Can you use or include data from psychometric tools? You can uh, certainly you can bring data from psychometric tools or any survey-based type of data. You can bring that in. You will work with our you know, IS. We have a metrics pack for surveys to bring that in, um, and uh, then you can essentially bring it in. And you can say again, uh, it, it, it sits alongside the other data. But you will work with our information services to bring that in if it's you know any particular table format or a structure that you have to bring in. And, and how often is the data? Yeah, well, with that, you know, I think just want to add one more piece is a lot of times I think, you know, when you talk about surveys, whatnot, I think there is a sense of anonymity. So with that, you know, you, we essentially block how we bring it at a detail level, but we kind of put the security layer on top of it so a manager cannot drill down to the individual uh, in person's information from the drill to detail. Great. And how often is the data from Employee Central and so on refreshed? Um, I think today it's still on, you know, on a monthly basis, but that's going to change, you know, I think soon from uh, with the W Workforce Analytics on HANA. That's it's going to go to, you know, pretty much on a daily basis. Excellent. Last question we've got: Does SAP have a connector to Kronos? We can take information from. Uh, so there is no predefined uh, connector to Kronos for. Uh, for workforce analytics, but you know, if you can get an extract out of Kronos, and we've had customers that have done that in the past, we can bring that data in and put it into into the relevant metrics pack. Fantastic. So what is it that you have questions that you want to ask based on your time data? You know, again, look at is it strategic or is it more kind of tactical reporting, time reporting type of information that you decide where where it should happen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, that takes us just past the top of the hour. I want to thank you all for joining us today. A big thanks to both of our speakers, Tai Nguyen and Koros Bazad. And to you, our audience, we thank you for your time and participation. Would you like to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one demo with SAP? In a few moments, a voluntary survey will pop up asking for your feedback on today's session and includes a way to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo. 
It's a great way to reach out and ask for more personalized information as well as to help shape our future webinars. Just a reminder that today's session has been recorded and we'll be sending out a link to the replay in the coming weeks. We hope that you'll join us for next week's demo which will cover learning. There's a link to register for that demo along with the rest of the series located in the resource list which you can access with the green icon. Again, thank you all for joining in today's session. Have a great day.